So till now we have seen how we can create and manage your files and directories. Now let us see how we can see the permissions of files and directories which we create into Linux operating system. So into our ls-l command we have seen we have list of permissions which we define for files and directories. Now how you will understand those particular permissions and you, how you can change that permissions that we are going to see here. So before we change, first we should understand how we can check for the permissions and what are the permissions they are. So basically if you are talking about the file permissions, they are of two, three types. One is for owner permission. So basically when a particular directory or a file is created, that user is a owner of the directory who has created the file. So we have to set the permission for the owner. Basically the owner has the full control permission so that he can create, delete, modify the existing file or directory. The next one we have that is called as a group permission. Now if I'm talking about the group permission, the owner decides which are the users can be added to its group. So he can add the users manually into the group and then he can assign the permission from the group of users. There is no limitation of the group of users which we can add into a users group. The next permission is for the others. So apart from the owner and the group, the public which are going to access your file, for them also we can set the permission. So either can be a full control permission, read only, what is the permission you want you can give. So which are the kind of permissions which we can set for this particular three groups that is owner, group and public permission that is other permission that we are going to see. So as like your windows operating system and any other particular permission which we define, we basically have read, write and execute permission even here. So read permission will provide a read access to a file or a directory. Write permission will allow you to create or modify or delete that particular directory and its content. Same way we have the execute. So execute permission provides you to access the data or particular list which we have into the directory. So basically we have three type of permission. If you allocate all these three type of permission that will be a full control. Or we can also provide the permission such as read and execute or a just read, write and execute or just read permission. So the permissions can be modified or it will be as per you which permission you want to provide on the owner group and others. Now while we are defining the permission, as like we have seen, we also have the commands here to do everything. So here we are going to see how we can check for the permission. Now if I want to check for the permission, generally your Linux has 10 bits assigned for the permission, like such way. Like here we can see the file permission we generally have has four different blocks where all these blocks has a different permission sets. Like here we can see it is just hyphen means nothing into it that means it is a file permission while in directory you can see it is written as d that means it is a directory and we are going to assign the permission to a directory then the three bit groups we have r w x that means read write execute permission for this group and the first group is your owner group here we can define this is the file which has the owner permission as read write and execute same way here read, write and execute for the directory. Same way this block is for your group. So for user, the owner can add multiple users into the group and the group will have this permission which is called as a read and execute. You can find W is missing in between that means it doesn't have rewrite permission. The next we have that is read and execute permission. Again read and execute is for public permission that for others. So this 10 bits has one bit over here which will be used for identifying whether it is a directory or a file. The second three bits block will be used for defining the permission for your owners. Again the next three bit blocks as we know this is blank but it's still we have the hyphen over here that means it is blank we do not have defined any right permission but still the bits are used. So that's the reason it is showing you three bit blocks are used for the group permission and the remaining three will be for others. Same for your directories as well. So this directory and file permission has the same kind of permission, same three groups we have that is owner, group and others. Only this will be different that will be 
that file have only hyphen in first product while the directory has D. So if I want to change or modify this permission or if I want to assign a manual permission to a particular directory and a file, we have a command called as chmod. So this chmod can be used for changing the permission or creating or assigning the permission for a specific directory or a file. But again, this chmod can be used in two different ways. Either you can use the symbolic method, like you can add, subtract the permissions by using some of your symbols, or you can use the octal permission or obsolete permissions. That means you are going to use the numbers for defining the permissions. So how you are going to use this both type of permissions or both type of way how you can create your permission or change your permission for a directory and a file that we are going to see into next slide.